Hi, Steve. Hi, Jeremiah. Um, this isn't my favorite thing to have to do. <laughs> you got my tooth. You slid it in my mouth. You have to keep your mouth, you have to keep your mouth closed. You got keep my your mouth closed. Okay, you, uh, you too. You know this is my worst nightmare, right? <laughs> this is not what I want in my life. Uh, guys, give it up for Satan. Hi, aren't I cute? <laughs> Fellas, you ever do this? Yeah. Calling your bluff, you fake, fake, fake man. The mob bitch. The mob bitch. <laughs> Can I hold this gun? Oh my god, Jeremiah! Yeah. Hold the gun. I bought a recorder. You bought a recorder? I bought, over pandemic, I bought a recorder. Did you really? Do you know how to actually play it? No, I haven't done anything with it, but I have it because I was like, I'll teach myself to do the recorder. Wouldn't that be funny if I could play some jams on the recorder? I mean, it'd be great if you just like kill it on recorder. But I never, I wasn't even good when we were supposed to be good at it. Do you know how to play it all? No, no, no. No, not at all. I mean, we had it. My parents said that. So one time, so I have a twin brother and older brother, and we all went to this like small Quaker school when we were in elementary school, and it was like 20 minutes away from our house. Okay. So we were driving to do the the recital, like the Christmas show or whatever, and we get there, and my parents realize we've all forgotten our recorders, like just full-blown <laughs> ADD. Every parent, every kid, the dog had ADD. We're all fucked up. So we had all, so my dad, like, jets it back like we're speeding we're in the minivan like you know bumping through red lights and going crazy my dad's just like going as fast as he can we get back we finally make it on time before the performance and my parents said that we just held them and like she could tell that we didn't know what we were doing you were just like my none it. of us were yeah none of us were playing it <laughs> for no reason can you imagine if if somebody like died in in the van ride like from trying to get a recorder i know to get the but it was i, I will say it was three recorders we all three <laughs> forgot our recorders okay. it wasn't just one missing recorder but I used to always get in trouble. This is amazing. Oh, yeah. I used to get in so much trouble for always forgetting my homework. I would forget my homework. I would do it, and then it would sit on the table, and I'd forget it. And I would get yelled at by the teacher. Now, the, would the teacher believe you, or? No, of course not. Because why would they? And You're I'm like, like oh, I, I swear to home. I did the whole thing. But thinking back, it's like, there's really one person to blame, and that's my mother. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> no, that, I love my mom. Little, I no longer blame her. That little assault rifle kind of suits you. I love it. I no, it felt really when I put it on my finger. I was like, this feels right. Yeah, you know what? Feel free to to shoot whenever you want. I love it. <laughs> I'm here, guys. It's got a little sound effect that people will be annoyed by. I love a little annoying sound effect. I like to eat crunchy things on podcasts. Oh yeah, yeah. Straight up ASMR stuff. Just to no, because just people to, like the ASMR more. Just to be like. I've held them captive. Like you choose whether you stay or not, but I'm going to do what I do. And then if I'm I like it, depending on what my diet is, like I'll mm -hmm. change it. So I'll be eating like chips or I'll switch to like celery. If well, I'm I've healthy. got a gallon of peanut butter that we can eat if you want to. Oh my God. Can you imagine? Do you really have a gallon of peanut butter? No, no, I, don't, I, don't I was just like, so you just get Costco peanut butter? It's so disgusting. No, no, I'm Kansas, but not quite that Kansas. That's a real, like, uh, new dad thing. But then you find out your kid's allergic to peanut butter, and then you just have this and jar forever. And like, oh, what am I doing here? So you have a kid? <laughs> yeah. You had a kid during the pandemic. I did, yeah. He's, um, like, a little over a month old now. A little boy. What's his name? Wilder. Wilder's a cute, that's a cute name. Thank you. I have a friend whose kid's name is that, too. Is that oh, weird? Oh, really? Yeah, Billy Wayne Davis's kid is named Wilder. Oh. Did you know that? Yeah, I did not know that. It's fucked I'll, up. I'll have to reach out to Billy. Yeah, maybe there'll be like little, a Wilder pack. I know uh, a, a guy, um, Handron, a uh, funny comic who, he named his daughter Wild. And he mm. wants them to get together just because, you know, Wild and Wilder. Wilder. Oh my God. And then, but she'll be crazier because that's the funny thing is if it's right. the opposite. Right, that's the comedy duo. It's like, right. that one's, Wilder's a straight man. Yeah. <laughs> I like wild. That's a cool name with an E. Yeah, right. I'm going to name my kids fuck and shit. <laughs> Potty talk. <laughs> Poopy. Poopies. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the main difference um, uh, when I've noticed m my son makes like a uh, yeah, stink in the diaper, you know? Mm -hmm. If it's inside the diaper, my wife is like, he made a poopy. Yeah. But like if it's outside, if it gets it's on her. Shit. Yeah. 
Cause Cause shit sounds like a shit splat. on me. He shit. shit. <laughs> yeah. That's like that's a more like oh that happened. They really will explode all over themselves, huh? I've been I've been peed on. Yeah. Well, you have to hold their dick down, right? Like when you, you're wiping them. You have to hold either a diaper or like a covering over it. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, like you just. I have a question. This is a serious question. Okay. Are you ever tempted when you're holding his penis down to just tuck it in and give the the youngest mangina of all time? Do you ever think about just tucking like it? Like Buffalo Bill him right away? Buffalo Baby Bill him. <laughs> baby Buffalo Bill? That'd be so cute. That'd be so cute. It'd be so adorable. The problem is with, um, you know, for our viewers and listeners who have penises, um, <laughs> you have to really be active with the Buffalo Bill when you do that. You have to have the leg control oh, yeah. to close it off. Yeah. Otherwise, like... That's abusive it, to hold the knees shut of the child. It's abusive. <laughs> right. You can't hold right. the knees shut. It's yeah. his choice. It's his choice. Listen, it's fine. <laughs> I, like, think I want to have kids, but I don't think about the kids that I will have. When... Has anybody asked you, like, timeline or You're anything like, like that? Are you like, TikTok, bitch? When are you, when are you gonna... <laughs> When's that gonna happen? <laughs> like, ooh, are you sure it still can? <laughs> well, Whitney keeps saying she's gonna freeze my eggs, but... Oh, she's just going to like do that for you as a gift? Uh, she keeps saying it and it's just not happened. And I have about two months left before you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to do it till you're 38. Or before you're 38. And I turn 38 in two months. How old are you? You're younger than me. Uh, yeah, I'm 32. 32? Yeah, okay. about to be 33 here in a bit. Oh, shit. Oh. Already a father. A young father. Young dad. I want to be old as shit, but Todd's 11 years younger than me, so. So you you're dating todd right? yes and todd can then take so, care of the children after i'm dead i haven't met todd yet but it was you know it, todd do i basement todd from the uh comedy store the editor oh you're dating that todd yeah okay i i didn't think i'd met him yet so so annie kept like texting me like todd's dropping me off and stuff <laughs> like that so i was like who <laughs> why does Annie think i didn't put it together i didn't realize it was that todd well i was yeah i guess it wasn't really out he was, I, he's my, I just tell people he's my unpaid assistant. He's my living assistant. Yeah. He's a good boy. And I know his family. What's the big deal? So. It's not a big deal. But he's nice and young, so he'll, he'll raise oh, how, the children. How young are we talking? He's 26. I'm okay. 37. Yeah. Pretty sick. That's nice. Yeah. Like I'm young. Yeah. Yeah. I met him when I was in college. <laughs> Trying that on stage tonight, so enjoy that. <laughs> Literally, the, half the audience would be like, "Okay," and then the other half would be like, "Wait, that math is just <laughs> all kinds of off." <laughs> you know, I have an Asian boyfriend during Stop Asian Hate. I'm the coolest person alive. It's no big Let's deal. Let's just say Annie is trending right now. I don't want to brag, but I'm incredible, and everyone should just be throwing flowers at me. Yes, <laughs> so proud of me. Do you see yourself as a uh, as as a woman who like? who settles down like that who has kids and then like does like you take like a chunk of time off or do you think you'd be the type of person who would keep working i literally thought you're gonna be like that has the kids and then like they're in the tub and you just like hold them under (laughs) it's crossed my mind i don't know it could be but i um i i i honestly that's the thing that i can't figure out because i'm like it doesn't when i envision my life i don't envision taking time off and having things that need me a lot right which is what that is so oh no i like it's a um my wife is a much more patient person than i am yeah. and and he's only been alive like a month but like i'm like oh yeah this is like this and it's is like forever a commitment. and it's forever this is a commitment because even when like i am like a nightmare to my parents still it's not i know they love me but it's like i don't go away I you don't go, go away, away. like they're, they're like oh until they're 18 it's like that's not a reality no no, no, no. i There's no yeah, way i came back when i was 18 okay they got a couple years off in between and i came back hard <laughs> This is like a horror film. So like you keep coming back over and yeah, over. Yeah, it's like they really Honey, she's will never back again. <laughs> she's moving back in. My dad's so funny, though. What do you say to me today? My dad sends me pictures of like old cars, and he's like, "Do you think this is worth anything?" <laughs> he's like, "I'm thinking about buying and swapping on the engine." <laughs> Does he think you know what things are worth? That's the thing. Is like he should know better. Like I was so like ADD as a kid, yeah. where I had to hold the light for my dad, like yeah. while he's working on cars. But I wish I would have paid attention because I would know a ton about cars. And you'd be able to answer your father when he asked. Yeah, questions. but I was just like, la 
la la la la. That's a bright light. It's confusing. Yeah. 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 Like, it illuminates things weirdly. Yeah, like, and now we are in a well lit garage. I know. Full circle. Yeah. You really have lived your dad's dreams in a weird way. In a weird, weird way. There's also a saxophone, but. I mean, there's so many things. There's so many toys around here. I know. I am not. Instruments are not really my thing. Well, you there's, know, I asked you through text. I said, Annie. Do you have any favorite bands or music in or anything? And what did I say? One answer. Papa Roach for life. So I figured, you know, if you're up for it, I printed off the lyrics of that song. I'm not going to sing it, though. You know, this is my worst nightmare, right? <laughs> no, but you know, like, not like this experience with you, but like, if someone's like, and now you sing, I'm like, no, I don't. I don't sing. <laughs> I will read them. Do you want me to read them like slam poetry? You want to do spoken word Papa I'm not, Roach? I would rather do spoken word Papa Roach than sing a fucking song. <laughs> what? Well, here, here's okay. It's not my thing. Let me ask. Let me ask. Because I am, I'm the opposite. I'm a very musical person. What is it that is um, that makes your skin crawl or is cringy to you about singing? It's the it's the the reading is a big part. The reading of the lyrics is difficult. Um, <laughs> I'm sounding words out. Everyone's staring at me. It's the timing's off. I have no rhythm. My voice is like breaking and cracking. It's my worst nightmare. You picked the perfect song for that. There is no tone or pitch. It's See, just. I wouldn't screaming. even know that. I don't know what. I don't know what that it's is. It's just screaming. So essentially, the spoken word. If you if you even do it with command, you're 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 killing it with Papa Roach. He's not like he's not like, cut my life into pieces. He he's talking about Jacoby. But there's a whole band that makes them who they are. I met them on a heavy metal cruise. I bombed really hard. Did you really? Oh, I bombed so hard. It was a big J. And um, was it the Impractical Jokers cruise? No, it was. Uh, it was called um, Shiprocked. Oh, it's like did this three eleven sometimes do that one? Yeah, but yeah, it yeah, was. Yeah. So it was like Avatar, Papa Roach were the headliners. Hoobastank was there. <sighs> Who I the drummer Chris? What's up, my boy? Um, I just made some very interesting friends. I really had so much fun. I I did Molly. You have a fun with, phone book. You have a fun phone. I have book. a fun phone book. I did Molly with uh, little brother Roach, who's now in the band. And maybe I gave him too much and ended up in the infirmary and I almost killed him. And I wrote, I hope my drugs don't kill you. And then I was like, oh my god, if he dies, there's literally like, I killed him. I murdered him. I'm gonna have him call into my podcast and tell the story because it was crazy. It was wild. <laughs> wild time I literally <laughs> murdered the younger brother well let's give this a shot so I have to sing it am I singing it with music were you practicing when I came in I might have been okay I thought you were just so into like your music that you take any minute that someone's <laughs> late to like practice <laughs> you thought I was that guy that's just like just like noodling and stuff like yeah. wow and I don't even know how to noodle it, th and I have to give a disclaimer I haven't played guitar in a while so this might be atrocious all the way around you know what noodling is to me it's when a guy's dick is soft and they still try to cram it in <laughs> that's a when noodling they noodle it's... you yeah I thought of a pool noodle yeah. we're on different ends of the spectrum we really are <laughs> but noodling yes noodling okay okay all right, so this is my worst nightmare. So thank you for having me. Um, of course, you know I like to, you know, make sure that people are having fun, but in different ways, and push them out of comfort zones. You know what I mean? My heart is like, yeah, okay. But here's, but, it's fine. but here's the thing: it's just you and I in a garage. There's no how many listeners no pressure. do you get? Huh? How many listeners do you get? We'll find out. No, how many do you usually get? Give me your I word. don't know. Oh my god, he won't tell me. Listen, I have a feeling it's not a big deal. So I, whatever number you said I was gonna go, whatever number you said I was gonna go. Oh, it's fine. Never mind. <laughs> okay, I've got my mom, my dad. No, they don't, they actually don't watch this podcast. That's your special. Uh, they, yeah, they actually yeah they were in the my audience. My mom's banned special. from coming to my shows. Um, my mom has a a loose. Uh, there's some restrictions. We'll we'll see. I'm back in Kansas City in the fall, and I'm gonna be like. We're not doing a part two. They don't Cause because... Because she, ha she heckled me during yes, the Yes, that's what my mom does to me. Every, and it's like, bitch, chill. Just like, look at it. <laughs> she would, and you know what she always does too? It's always like when I'm so stressed out. Like, it's like when I'm like... Because when I do my shows back home, I'm not... I don't like anyone from my high school. I had trauma in my, yeah. my high school experiences. So I'm always scared of who's going to show up. And then my mom's like throwing shit at me. I'm like, oh my God. But I think I can handle her now. 
I right. just did you handle her like a heckler? Because I never handled my mom like a heckler because I she's my mom. I brought her up on stage yeah. and like made a thing of it. Right. And then I ended it nicely, but like I went in on her just like a little bit. I was like, Are you all right? Are you gonna behave now? Yeah. Kinda like, you know. I definitely have like brought them on stage. Like I guess it's my fault because I've been loose with the rules before yeah but i'm like i start it bitch like you don't get to start it i start it when you're talking i'm the maestro i'm the conductor well, it's just here. so confusing i'm like my back's to the audience now i'm like trying to figure out what my mom's talking about <laughs> the fuck? this is a cold open on, on on this song so this is like so uh so the it starts off acapella Do you know what a cold open is to me what is a cold open to it's you? when um your pussy's frozen but you still decide to fuck anyway go ahead sorry Cut my life into pieces. You didn't start yet. No, no, it, it goes right in after no, this. No, it's is already my... embarrassing. There was no music to hold me. To <laughs> carry okay, me. I'll, I'll start playing along. But with you it. heard how I fucked it up. You didn't though. No, I did. You really didn't. Oh my god. You did. Tony, are you watching? <laughs> Tobin, turn it off. I'm just kidding. I'm not friends with all of them. <laughs> I'm just listing the ones I don't know. Yeah, yeah. This how about is a... my last resolution. No breathing. <laughs> Don't give a fuck if I cut my arm off bleeding. This, I can't do this. This is not what I want. This is not what I want in my life. I don't want to do this. Okay, okay, we don't have to do I'm it. I'm gonna read it. I will read it a cappella. Cause I'm losing my sight, That's losing my mind. There you go. Sing with Wish me. Wish somebody would tell, tell me I'm fine. Losing my sight, losing my mind. Wish somebody would tell me I'm fine. Nothing is right. Nothing is right. I'm running out and I'm crying. Okay, so I'm then. Crying. Yeah, there's a lot of other words, but. That was perfect. You killed it. There's a part where he loses his mother. <laughs> you guys, listen. All I want to say is. I saw them at the fucking. Um, Roxy Theater. Okay. Yeah. Got backstage passes, don't want to brag. Backstage passes, hung out, said what's up. They come out, they go like this, they go, LA, we love you. And they gave like a heart, they drew a heart with their fingers and yeah. I went, oh shit, I've been doing comedy wrong. Cause I come out and I go like, fuck you. <laughs> and just assume everyone hates me. Yeah. And I had like an epiphany. I was like, oh, I should be like. Have you been do, how do you like when you're headlining on the road because I, I i've seen you go up a bunch at the store and like different clubs and stuff like that but i haven't it's rare that we as comics get to see our, our buddies do extended long right. sets and well, who would want to i mean honestly can you imagine watching an extended set of your friends <laughs> i gotta see uh christina p on the road and that was cool you were uh, opening or you just went or you just like, i was headlining a different club okay. i got done early and i was like i'll just go check it out like, you and know you what I mean? sat and you were just a good boy in the audience? Yeah, I was like the last 20 minutes of her set. But it was cool to see... See, that's different. Someone in... What do you mean? Imagine watch sitting through the entire set. And not like, I love Christina. Like, that's a best case scenario. But it's like, I I mean, I, I opened for Louie and I like couldn't... Couldn't finish the show. I was yeah. like, I just heard some key words and I was like, yeah. I love this joke and this joke. But I couldn't, I was like, you know. So how on the road, like, would you, do you, how positive are you when you go out and, and meet the audience? Like, oh, I'm very, well, now it's different. Well, now they, like, come to see me. Like, okay, so before, before COVID, I was, like, some people would know who I was when they were coming, but then a lot of people were just coming to see a comedy show, and right. that's fucking not ideal with my uh, act it's not ideal with my act. well if, if they are not warmed up to your sense of humor exactly they're like, oh, this this woman this is young lady is talking is about just... like she's talking about horses fucking amanda death and i'm like but didn't you see that you saw this documentary right i'm like but you guys did see it oh you didn't okay it's a real thing it's sorry a real thing. oklahoma but um yeah so i just so th but this time so then you know like i would be doing meet and greets after and it'd be kind of awkward like yeah. uh like, if you guys want, like, I'll take pictures with you, you know, and like, I remember one time this lady, where was I, I was in, at Crackers, where's Crackers? Indiana? Indiana, yeah. okay, it was at Crackers, and this woman, like, was drunk, and she was leaving with her husband or boyfriend, and she gets out the door, and then she, like, comes back, like, can you see him grabbing her, and she, like, run, like, rips free, and she goes, you fucking suck! 
And I was like, oh my God. Like, I didn't have that bad of a set. I was like, Jesus. But she, I had like triggered her or you something. She's like screaming at me. And then I was like, let's go. And then it's like so awkward because there are people taking pictures. And then some some of the people taking pictures, I was like, wait, are you taking pictures so I feel better? Like, these aren't for me. Like, it was just so awkward. So now that because of my podcast and stuff, people are coming to see me. So I'm like, oh, thank God. And maybe the documentary too. Yeah. But it's just like, it's been a good COVID. So now it's like different. It's like, oh, cool. But you do, do you ever see like the bigger guys, I won't name any names, when they're like over that stage, they're so over the fans knowing them and liking them. And they're like, let's take the picture fast. Like, let's take the fucking picture. Like they're pissed and snappy. Yeah. I, I mean, I just can't relate because I've obviously I've never been at that level, yeah. but like, I don't understand that. I'm like, this is the thing that like, you're doing it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what, what do you expect? And they'll also, like, cause you can have boundaries, but they're also going to remember this forever. Yeah, they're one, right. they're one 15 second interaction. Do yeah. you really want it to be like, oh, I went and saw Andy Letterman after every show. Like, yeah, yeah, I guess I'll take it. Yeah, whatever, sure. And they feel so bad. Then they feel like they did something wrong or whatever. Yeah. But who knows? I mean, I mean, I've had I so many nice. interactions in my head when I was a younger comic with a comic that's more established that I'm thinking about it for like yeah, weeks yeah, and yeah. weeks. And, and then I realize like the more and longer I'm in comedy, I'm like, they didn't care. Yeah, like, Rob you know Schneider I mean? wasn't thinking about me. Exactly. It was just like, it just it was like a, a moment, a small moment. I love Rob time. Schneider, by the way. Oh, yeah. He he gave me uh, props after a show once in Montreal and it meant like the world to me. What, so he there give you, you go. like a banana that squeaks or what? <laughs> <laughs> he gave you a little fake sword? Ironic enough, he was complimenting uh, the wave. So he was like, he's like, you guys are like, like a modern day Three Stooges. And I was like, really? <laughs> Thank I, you. Rob will like, I'll go on the road with him. He's so nice. I'll go on the road with him and he'll, um, I'll go on stage and then I'll yeah. come off stage and he'll like write all these like notes for me. He'll be like, you're a star. Just step into it. Like, just feel it, Annie. We're waiting for you. Like, don't hold back. Like, and I'm just like, oh my God. That's so the nice. The animal just, Deuce fucking Bigelow just wrote that to me. This is crazy. Did the hot chick just give me <laughs> affirmations? What's I'm going like, on? I'm like, Rob, you're getting hot. This is like, you're really a hot chick right now. Yeah. What's going on? But, um, yeah, it's cool when people are nice. It's cool when people are nice. My mom used to write in my, uh, my lunches. And when I would go to summer camp, she would write little notes and put them in my socks in summer camp. So new pair every day. Oh my God. How awkward was that when you jizzed in that sock and you're like, Oh no. So, I was like, no mom's no. It's but it kind of like shellacked it. So you're like, I'll keep it forever. It's tattooed in there. Oh my God. It's a this memory. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> my mom. Yeah. My mom would, um, she would like draw little pictures on our lunch. You should give us our lunch in a little brown paper bag and she would draw like a picture of her and my dad. Yeah. Like a little caricature. Now, is she good at, at uh, drawing? She's very good at drawing, yeah. See, my mom was, this is not one of her skill sets and it would just be like stick figures but, and she has blonde curly hair and she would just be a stick figure with like yeah, yeah, with yeah. like swirls all around but it. it's good enough it gets the like you, you the point yeah. across yeah but also like my mom wasn't like sketch like etching out the can you imagine if she just like did like a <laughs> yeah it's like mom character portraits before like while you're sleeping this was you last like, night like how much sweetie. do you need mom like how much attention do you need <laughs> but she would do like caricatures like she'd make my dad's chin big and she'd really like, highlight that he was bald you know <laughs> And she'd make, yeah, she'd put her glasses in and stuff. It was fun. I liked, that is cute. I think I am like getting to a place where I've gotten over being mad at my parents and I'm a little actually embarrassed that I was mad at them. And I'm like, now I'm like, oh, I'm like remembering all these good things. Like, You're like, oh, that's oh like, they really cared. I'm like, oh my God, that was so cute. She always did all that stuff for me. Yeah, that's, that, it is nice when you look back at, at certain things like, oh man, okay, yeah, they're really going out of their way. Yeah, and my, now that they're old, I'm like, why would I ever be mad at them? My mom would... Uh, this was a baller move. She would sometimes take us out of school on, on purpose, randomly throughout the middle of the week. Uh, she would take us out of school and the teachers and the faculty, like the principal would, would be like, they'd step outside. They're like, Mrs. Watkins, is everything okay? She'd go, yeah, we're going to have a fun day today. <laughs> so your mom's bipolar. <laughs> so your mom is uh, mentally ill. That's great. You're like, the other day, she would beat us with a spatula. It was so fun she, she would, and crazy. She, she would take us and go get McDonald's and we'd just go to the park. <laughs> That's so fun. Yeah. And then really like, cool. there'd be no explanations. And like the kids would be like, where are you going? I'm like, I'm going to the park. See yeah, ya. sorry. My mom's cool. Yeah, she she's awesome. Fuck. Don't even worry about it. I, um, yeah. My mom would, my brother and I were talking about this. My mom in the morning, we went to a private school that was my Quaker school that I told you about. 
that was like 20 minutes away. You know, I went to private school too, right? What kind of private school? Christian private school. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. yeah. What kind of so, Christian? Uh, so it was Protestant Christian and it was called Church of God Holiness. Okay, so, so we yours could was probably... like real. Like my Quakerism is like kind of like... We're Christian, like it's kind of like, it's like hipster nah. Christians. It's really like hipster. <laughs> yeah, it's very yeah, yeah. chill and like be gay. And you're like, I don't want to like just be gay. I'm like I don't want to be gay. Like, don't you want two moms? It's like I guess all my friends in in elementary school had two moms. I remember my this girl Sarah when I was in like first grade. My mom remembers this too. Like she came down the stairs when they were coming to pick us up at our other friend's house, and she was like, "Mom, when I grow up, I want to be a lesbian because her parents were lesbians." Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, all right that's my school there you go um but so we um so we, the bus would take us my mom would drop us off at the local high school that was like five minutes away mm -hmm. and the bus would take us like all the private school kids to their different schools so my mom would show up like a few minutes late every time and she would chase the bus down the street and honk and the bus driver's like sorry bitch every day not gonna happen so they're flooring it my mom is like seriously like weaving around traffic and pulling getting up front. side by side and then she would cut them off so that they had to pull over this happened every morning every single morning and she was like Arr! and then finally the and then they'd let us in and then be because of our quicker school we didn't have uh we told her we talked to her about our or we called our teachers by their first name which by the way don't do that it's like we need to call them mr whatever so we know not to fuck them you know that's what i've learned <laughs> not from the quaker school but from my high school that we also called them by their <laughs> they're gonna fuck us um yeah if you're but, just like calling a dude curtis it's just like all right, right the boundaries totally. are a little weird well so the bus driver was mr Danny, jenkins you did a really good good job <laughs> on your homework thanks curtis yeah thank you like are you flirting with me but so the bus driver was mr jenkins but then my mom was like just call him bill so we were just calling bill so we're showing up late and then we're just disrespecting him sorry bill <laughs> and we didn't, I'm like thinking about again. people must have fucking hated us. If you cut the off the bus driver every day, yeah. It's crazy. And it was like, it, we just never, there was just three of us, so we just never got out of the house in time. We forgot our fucking homework. Homework? Hectic. Recorders? ADD. Now, does your family have ADD too, or just you? I think my sister does. I think I do at certain times for sure. Um, and then my brother, my brother's pretty focused. Yeah. Yeah. My brother's like, uh, uh, he's like in seminary school right now. So he's like, are you still Christian? Do you feel Christian? I tell people this is so, this is very LA, but like when I first Spiritual. moved, mm -hmm. when, it, when I first moved to, uh, LA, I would say that I was like a devout Christian. Yeah. Wow. And then, um, as the years went on, uh, I would say, uh, I'm still religious. And then uh, now I tell people I'm spiritual because I still believe in God. But are you just saying God. that? But are you saying you're spiritual just to get people like off your back, or do you really feel like you've? I think I'm spiritual in a way where I believe. If without getting too Guys, much into listen, it, listen, L.A. is that fucked up? Okay, it ruined his <laughs> it fucking. It ruined my belief system. No, he's so like I, still... I can't believe in a God if this place exists. <laughs> I so I still believe in God. I still pray every day. But if you are a devout Christian you kind of are supposed to be going to church all the time. You're supposed right. to be reading the Bible. Right. I don't do either of those. So like I can't, I'm like, okay, so I kind of in a, in a different category where I also, there's like fire and brimstone with certain, what, uh, if your literal translation with the Bible is certain walks of life and stuff, which I don't agree. Like, Oh, if you're this, then you go to hell. It's like, I don't believe that anymore. Say it. Huh? Say it. Oh, the gay gays. people, trans, all that stuff. I don't believe that you're going to hell if you're gay. Right, yeah. You know what course. I mean? Like, But if you're trans. But if you're trans, different no. <laughs> story. No, just kidding. No, um, you're going to limbo. It's fine. It's fun there. <laughs> limbo does sound like a gay nightclub. And actually, limbo sounds like a fun place to be like trans at. You're like, we're hanging. Grab that mic right there. Oh, I love it. Yeah, guys. <laughs> I think this is what my voice sounds like. I mean, that's what I hear when I listen to you talk. Right, I honestly, this is... When I listen to my sets back, it sounds like this. <laughs> Can I do the whole interview like this? For a, for a little bit longer, for sure. Ask me, so I'm Satan. Now ask me some questions about your spirituality. Uh, okay, so uh, uh, guys, give it up for Satan. Hi, aren't I cute? <laughs> is, is Lil Nas X down there with you right now? No, no, no. Okay. I, this is going to be, this was supposed to be the big reveal. Little Nas X is God. What? Yeah. That is... Really? Yes, and yeah. So, Old Town Road 
is like his first parable. Yes. I don't know what a parable is because I'm in <laughs> hell, but yes. Okay. Okay. Actually, you know what a parable is to me? It's when um, <laughs> a paraplegic is trying to fuck you in the butthole, which you call bull uh, for short, and um, it doesn't work. But right. Try anyway, right. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, what, what are your thoughts on, um, like, I still believe in God. I still pray. Uh, I actually believe, you would. I believe that there's a you, you know, I believe that there's a hell. I believe that are there's you a you. Of me? I think at times I am. Yeah. What do you think I'm going to do to you? I think that you're going to trick me into <laughs> to doing evil things. Oh, it's my fault. Wow. I don't okay. want to. I don't want to put the blame on you. No, no, Satan, it's my but... fault. It's my fault. Sa- it. no, 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 it's fine. Satan, are you upset with me? No, I'm not. I'm not upset. I don't care. I don't uh, give a fuck about you. Uh oh, it looks like I don't a... give a fucking shit about you. You mean nothing. Okay. Um, this is weird, but one of your uh, other demons is uh, wanting to talk to us. Hey, Queen, what's going on? Oh my god. Oh, I mean, oh my little Nas, what's up? Um, you know, I just uh, wanted to give you some updates on the Lake of Fire. It's going really well. Oh my we just god. got a bunch of new souls in. You're going to love this. These now, new souls Lake of got. Fire is when you're having an herp- herpes outbreak and you're fucking at a lake and you still do it anyway. Oh, lovely. You oh. know that I'm all about that. Oh my god. I feel like I am on hallucinogens right now. Yeah, because, you know, what we're hearing inside our head is just so out there and weird. It's really... Yeah, but also, like, earlier I was at the mall, and that felt... Well, you are that mall bitch. We all know I that. am a mall bitch. Thank you for realizing that I'm the mall bitch. Well, you are that. <laughs> and how is the mall? Guys, I have, a, I have another twist. The mall has always been hell. And when you go there, you're just selling your soul to me. So each time you buy a little plastic shit from Spencer's Gifts, a little piece of your soul comes to me. Well, uh, they just opened a new store at the mall called Abercrombie and Fist. And oh my god. Yeah, there's uh, a lot of new updates that they got over there. It's really sad. Wow. So and the guys no longer are shirtless. They're just... They're bottomless. They're just, yeah, they're bottomless. They're they bottomless. just have their asshole open. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. So, you know, some new developments on planet Earth that we're trying to lead <laughs> up from hell. So it's good. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I'm the mall bitch. Thank you for noticing You're that. that. I'm going to do mall bitch. I'm going to do mall bitch work. You should do more. Merch. Oh, you should definitely do a mall bitch. I want to do a mall tour. You should do a mall tour. Like Tiffany in the 80s or 90s. Yeah, you should be that girl. The mall bitch. That mall bitch. But I can't like do it when like the hours where there are children and stuff. I could be like, so that horse was fucking the guy. You guys saw it, right? <laughs> I have one joke. <laughs> wow, well, you should do it like while you're in uh, the food court, while there's like the merry-go-rounds going oh, around, yeah. and you're doing horse. Does it'll be perfect? Now, Mall of America, have you been there? I haven't yet. Oh God, it's really it's amazing. I've heard it's a it's a great place. Now you have a retainer there. I do have a retainer here. You're very observant. You have a retainer. Do you have a you have a cleft palate or something? You gotta. No, but um, I have bad uh, gums, and uh, long term as a sax player, my dentist has made me a retainer as almost a. Uh, it's like a. It's like a brace for your knee, but for your mouth, so I can play sax without damaging uh, my gums. Well, that's so weird because in college when. <laughs> When I would damage my mouth, I don't have a good one. I was going to try. You guys know what I was doing. You're going to try to go into it. Now, okay, so when we, did you play on NBA Jams? Did you like when it was sax was to play Clinton? Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. The code sax, yeah. And were you inspired by Bill Clinton Um, to become? No, but I, I saw that as a kid and I was like, oh, that's cool. The president plays were sax. Were you a child, a child saxophone player? I was, yeah. Were your, did your parents choose it for you? No, I chose it. Was it because you were repressed because you were a Christian and sax sounds like sex? Maybe. I wanted to learn more about sax. You wanted to noodle the sex? Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to, you know, put my noodle in a... Okay. So you have, and you have your retainer. Yeah. I had, I had a gum problem. When I was drinking, I got trench mouth, which is what like people, like homeless people get it and people at war. Yeah. Where my gums were receding. It felt like I had flossed my teeth for the first time 
in like 10 years, like every day. It just hurt really bad. It was just aching. And my gums were receding. And I went to this, I lived in Santa Fe, New Mexico. I was Jaeger morning to night, you know, yeah. just fucking blacked out. And I went to the ma- the De Vargas Mall, which is like a really bad mall. And there was a dentist in the mall. Like all, every everyone else was like the kids with like full chrome teeth, you know? Yeah. Waiting. And they were like, you have trench mouth. Now, trench mouth is when I dip my balls in yes. a woman's mouth and yes, she yes. already has mud inside of yes. it. I'm like, why do you have mud inside your but mouth? But you just keep doing it anyway. But you keep doing it and you keep right, doing right, it over right. and over. It's so crazy. That's what we call it too. Anyway. So, yeah, no, but I had fucking trench mouth. Isn't that weird? Yeah. So how did, did you have to have surgery to? No, they just had to do deep clean scraping. So I have to get those. That actually um, feels good though afterwards, right? Well, your mouth, it hurts so much in right. the moment, but your mouth feels so much better yeah. long term. So I have to get those. I have to do these. Uh, they call them scalings, like deep cleanings. I have to do them every uh, three to four months. So disgusting. And it's like, it goes way underneath your, your gums. You to, know what scaling actually out? is when um, your dick is actually like starting to like flake off. It's like when you get the grayscale from mm. Game of Thrones, but you're like, we're already here. I'll just get the disease and you fuck them anyway. Scaling from where I'm come, uh, where I come from is, um, is actually when you hook up with a dude who uh, loves parkour. Oh, okay. I thought yeah. scaling actually where I come from, it also is like mm-hmm. when you actually weigh the cock before you put it on, you put it on the scale yeah. and then depending on how much it weighs, you still have sex with it. Yeah. Well, uh, scaling, uh, also the region where I come from is when you go to a drug dealer and you ask for an eighth and they give you just an eighth of the tip of their dick. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I, when they do that, when I was like, I came for Coke, <laughs> I didn't even want weed. Why All do right. I have a Coke? I, I came for Coke, left with cock. I mean, what's going on crazy. here? crazy. Coke, Coke, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I have to take a quick second and thank one of our newest sponsors and a big fan of Jeremiah Wonders, Fume. Hmm. <laughs> Fume took a look at the world and noticed the solutions to quit smoking, like patches or nicotine inhalers, were neither desirable nor easy to use. You ever smoke? Oh my god. Boy, do I could just fucking smoke. I like to put them in backwards. I like to light the filter first. Oh. See, she's got a problem, guys. In response, Fume handcrafts beautiful wooden pipes to make the quitting process simple, Ooh. easy, and even cool looking. And what I like about these, this is natural oils and uh, essential oils and stuff like that and uh, and super fruits. This is actually just for allergies. This isn't even, even for uh, to help quit it's smoking. It's not even fucking with your shit yet. This is just like for like healthy, like, airflow for my big schnoz now i'm a little bit upset that there isn't a whistle happening though like whee! there's a missed opportunity it's so annoying don't you hate when you're getting raped in an alley and you go to grab your whistle but you grab your fucking fume <laughs> you grab your fume you're instead like, Fuck, but your allergies get better so you're like i guess i can enjoy this <laughs> just sit back and enjoy the rapings head to breathefume.com and use promo code wonder and grab a fume and check out their variety of plant infused cores to start today i mean they've helped over thirty thousand customers annie worldwide and hundreds of customers who have shared their quitting stories on their site that you can check out head to www.fumeessential.com that's f-u-m essential and use code wonder to save yourself 10 percent to help you or a loved one quit today i want one of those that seems awesome because usually when i start smoking again it's because i'm like I start to just like it's the hand to mouth yeah, thing. I do That's like actually it. one of the things that they that that they uh, they specialize in that they've done studies with is sometimes when you're a smoker, you literally are just used to the yeah. hand to mouth thing. But they're just well. That's like, why vaping is the the thing. Like who knows what it does to your lungs? But it's like the amount of time you can just be doing that. Like it oh, doesn't yeah. end. Like the cigarettes end. Oh, so you're well, just smoking the whole day. Well, that's uh, our buddy Josh Adam Myers. His throat ended up getting messed up more from doing uh just like token on like little hits of Cock. vape oh <laughs> from because he could do it all day right <laughs> right right and he was always <gasps> sucking on that thing and he was always sucking on that actually thing. i don't care for him i don't like him he's not my friend i hate him unfollow him um i'm Is just kidding real? no i love him <laughs> i love like, him but isn't that funny what if i did hate him and you were like our dear friend no do i you, absolutely do love you him. remember the first time we started doing shows together this was like probably at least eight or nine years ago. I remember when we realized we looked alike. I do remember yeah. that when I was like, there's definitely like a, there's something, there's some weird brother, sister yeah, energy yeah, yeah. going on here. Sister wife. Now that I know you're a and, Christian. And I had, you know, I had long blonde hair too. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. You a really minute. were kind of ripping my whole thing. I was kind of biting your style. I was that other mall bitch for a little he while. Was, he was going around saying he was mall bitch. He was like, <laughs> do you know what noodling is? And he was like talking about sex. And I'm like, that's gross. That's I was like, actually fellas, a do you ever do this? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. So gross. And that was like my full act. So. Open 
Right. And by the way, I was thinking about wearing because we're both we both wear a lot of Meth Syndicate shirts. I love Meth Syndicate. So I yeah I love I, they're fucking so cool. I you love know them. so you know Eric yeah, and yeah, Rebecca. Yeah. I love them. So cool. Rebecca does not have her dyed hair anymore, and I'm freaking out. Oh, because Rebecca she had used dyed split. like yeah she had it blonde and then black the Harlequin style. And I'm like oh it's fine, but yeah. Oh no, I liked I liked. I was uh, so into it, I but, I, but you got to move on. You got to move on. You, you can't have on. the same thing. You know they're getting married and stuff, so that's so we exciting. We're wishing you guys well. We love you guys. I did think they were already married, and then as a joke once when they posted a picture of each other, I wrote, "Oh, I thought you guys were siblings," and he wrote, "Like you did," and I was like, like no, "No, but like it's so too late." And I was like, five <laughs> I'm comments like, so in." Sorry. I was like, "Ooh, bombs happen in all different places and genres in life. <laughs> you don't need to be on stage." Oh, I made a joke on, on um. Okay, the, now that I have context to explain, I want to explain this joke to you that I made on uh, Chelsea Lynn's uh, page. She's like, uh, she posted like one of her Tammy pictures, mm -hmm. like with like kind of like her boobs out. And she's like, are you guys hot right now? Some kind of caption like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I posted a comment on her Instagram that said, uh, I showed this to my three week old son and he's rock hard right now. Maybe not the best joke, but people lost their... I had to delete the comment. They lost their minds on her page. This is vile. This is disgusting. Who do you think you are? I'm like, I'm just a new dad making a dumb joke. You're like, I'm spiritual, baby. I'm not fucking... <laughs> I don't identify as that anymore. Listen, all right? It's all chill around I'm fucking here. fucking Venice Christian. I go That's to the fucking good. beach. Venice you know? Christian. You know what I'm talking about? They have all those like weird religions. The crosses and yeah, all this stuff. Yeah, they have, um, jo uh, not Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Andrew Keegan has if a church If they had JTT, I mean. No, but Andrew uh, Keegan, who was kind of a JTT. Yeah. Who was like one of those like guys that was like in, he was in, did you ever see the movie Camp Nowhere? Yeah, of course, yeah. Christopher Lloyd, right? It was such a good movie. It's great. It's I fantastic. mean, that movie is like, doesn't that feel like what our lives are? Yeah, absolutely. I feel like we're in camp nowhere. I'm like, well, are we like faking? Like, what's going on? How are we doing this? That's what I feel all the time when I do this podcast and I, and I put on wigs with friends and stuff. And it's like in the afternoon. It's like, what are we, what am I doing? It's because Camp love Nowhere it. inspired us. It showed us we can be who we want to be. By the way, that kid, that Christopher Lloyd character would have been fucking all of the kids. <laughs> How unacceptable is it that there's one guy? So if you guys don't know the premise of this movie, it was Christopher Lloyd played the camp counselor for whatever camp each kid was supposed to go to. So each of these kids were so annoyed they had to go to like, a, you know, like a math camp or a fat camp or like a Christian. I mean, I don't remember what they actually were, but so so they just had camp nowhere where it was the kids were running the coop. They could do whatever they wanted. And Christopher Lloyd just barely paid attention. But then they would have parents weekend where everyone would have to like get together and act like it was the math camp or whatever. But in reality, if that was happening, that guy would be fucking every hole and every kid at any moment all the time. Am I wrong? Or they'd be doing math, like something that would have been drugs. Somewhere in between. But, you know, Great maybe Scott, that's, that's a nice bottle. <laughs> maybe this is my... This is your new pitch for Camp Maybe Nowhere I'm Volume too, 2. baby. <laughs> Camp and Nowhere, colon, somebody got canceled. Camp Nowhere, <laughs> when you're at camp and you want to fuck, but there's nowhere there's to do it. There's only kids around. What else do you, what are you going to do? do? Anyway. <laughs> camp Nowhere, too. But, uh, um, yeah, uh, Andrew Keegan has a church. Oh, there's also uh, the guy from, is it Family Ties? No, not Family Ties. It's... um. Growing pains. Oh right, uh, Michael. No, um, no. Kirk, Kirk. Kirk Cameron. Cameron. Yeah. I uh, one he of was the guy? one of the churches that I went to would Left show behind. Kirk Cameron videos. I remember Left Behind. Did you do you watch that instead of Home Alone? I yeah, that was that, like your Left version. Left Behind was my yeah. Macaulay. I was like, oh, this is so crazy. <laughs> this is fun. I used to have fear that the rapture would happen though, and uh, all so this scary. If my parents, if I, you know, when you're a kid and you wake up sometimes and you can't find your parents right yes. away. Every time, every time I couldn't Banging find him the right shower. away. Oh, no, wait. Banging in the shower. Okay. I was left behind. <laughs> I, I was worried wow. that the rapture had taken place because the church that I went to was so fire and brimstone that I was like, oh, I wasn't good enough. Like, like so I got So the rapture takes the good people and leaves the shitties. The rapture the takes the good people, yeah. And then it's like fire and you have to like fend for yourself type thing or what? I, yeah, that's when like, I guess. Armageddon. Technically or... Armageddon. The hell gates open. You, you start being Bruce enslaved by people. In. Bruce Willis comes in. Ben Affleck's there. Ben Affleck back with Jennifer. He's crawling through Lopez. an air duct. He's got fire. You back know. with Jennifer Lopez. You know about this? No. Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez have been spotted holding hands. Whew. Okay. This is 
breaking news. Guys, I'm freaking out. <laughs> People reached out online to send in suggestions mm -hmm. and send in questions okay. for Annie Letterman, and uh, I got I got some bangers for you. Okay, I didn't see you post this, so I think these are fake. But go ahead. Okay, great. Um, Calling your bluff, you fake, fake, fake man. <laughs> at i dot sold dot out on Instagram, your favorite memory of being from Philadelphia that shaped you mostly who you are. Okay, so uh, it was it was take your daughter to work day. It was. What year was it? It was probably two, 1992. 1992. I'm nine years old. Take your daughter to work day. My dad didn't want me to go to work with him. I go to with my mom. Okay, my mom is working at that point at the radio station called WXPN. It is uh, the University of Pennsylvania's radio station. My mom was writing the newsletter. She's taking me to work, hang out with the disc jockeys. It'll be fun, right? On the way in, we're driving into the city. We stop at a light. I take a look over to my right, and there is a grown man taking a shit. I'm watching shit fall over his ass. A full shit. And I'm seeing it. I watch the whole experience. I watch it plop on the ground. And I'm about to say something to my mom, and then the light changes. So I just took it in. I just kept it and I took it and that is why I've never had a real job because daughter shouldn't go to work. That was my Philly moment. I mean, that's a great, that's a great Philly moment. Favorite thing on the menu at Wawa. I'm just curious. Um, I will do like a shorty meat, a meatball shorty. Sometimes I really like their chicken noodle soup. That's not really like a Wawa staple, but they just have a good chicken noodle soup. It's I will try that the next time I'm there. Yeah. But yeah, I like the meatball shorties or an Italian. Nice. Hoagie. Uh, and their mint chocolate chip ice cream is bomb. I will try that the next time yes. I'm on there for sure. Uh, a lot of people ask this, um, but this one comes from at Bub Subs. Why did you call Stevie a simp? Because he was acting like one. He was so <laughs> grateful I was there. He was so like, I was like, are you like obsessed with me? Like he was so, he was too excited that I was like, I couldn't believe it. I was like, am I like your favorite Comic? living human? Yeah, 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 like, yeah. I, I've just never been treated like a like a queen like, like that. royalty like I felt like he would that's kiss my, my toes that's my scissor brother for you right there I love him he is really great he's so fun he's oh such my a goodness. sweet man I'm sorry for what Santino did to you guys <laughs> monster uh, gingers not to be trusted I know you're sort of one but people keep saying that blondes are gingers sorry. are they yeah, because your beard's white. It's ginger. It's like more ginger than ginger, honestly. What? It's okay people, though. People keep calling me ginger in comments, and I'm like, I'm not a ginger. I'm more blonde. That's like when people call you Jewish, and you're like, I'm not a Jew, and they're like, Wait, is that that's anti-Semitic? That I'm so mad that I'm calling you Jewish. Right, right. <laughs> the amount of people that ask me if I'm Jewish just because of my nose. I the know, like, amount of people. You should they're be like, like Why are my you? ears? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, uh, is, is that my cheekbones? <laughs> yeah. What, what is it? They're like, Oh, never mind. He doesn't get it. <laughs> Clearly not uh, reading into this well. Um, you know, a question I thought you were gonna ask me. What? And I'd love to clear this up. I get this question all the time and it pisses me off. Tom Segura's last um, special, he tells a story about a girl who goes and you're wearing your Watkins Wu-Tang yep. shirt, a girl who goes to a uh, Wu-Tang concert, that's his friend, okay, he's at, I can't remember how it was set up, they were sitting at coffee or something and she was telling him this story about how she really wanted to bang all of the Wu-Tang members. And then she went on the bus and she came off the bus after she'd banged them or something. And I'm paraphrasing. And she was like traumatized. Like it didn't go well. And the joke is essentially like, yeah, what did you think, bitch? And um, <laughs> and then he goes, but, you know, she's from Philly. The amount of people like guys, first of all, what you think my pussy, like the size you think my vagina is, is off. You're off. OK, <laughs> you're off. I got a little wild in my younger years, but. It's so fucking annoying how often I get that. Because I think he said something about hoops. So hoops, Philly. Right. People are done. They're like, it's you, bitch, you slut. We know you fucked them. And it's all like the worst people where I'm like, yeah, okay. So let's clear the air right now. I only fucked what? two of the Wu-Tang members okay. and, and it was not on the bus. And okay? also, 
what's the size of your vagina? Let's clear okay, the air. Okay, guys, you think it's like this big? It's like that big. <laughs> okay, so guys, so you think it's this, is this, all right? It's this, okay? I could give birth to my own head very easily. <laughs> so don't you even worry about so it. So stop talking mm. about how my vagina is like this big. <laughs> that mall bitch still loose, but she tied it the I'm same time. I'm a mall time. bitch, okay? Assholes untouched. <laughs> That sounds like a rap line. I'm a mall bitch, asshole untouched. <laughs> what up? Like it in the front or the back or the butt. I feel mall like bitch, mall bitch. I'm like anti anal. I'm like I'm the Nikki's pro anal. I'm anti anal. Okay, we have to be like the opposite of we each other. We have to be different camps. We're okay, both listen, blonde, she hot loves, female comics. Okay, she loves anal. I'm like ew. I like, I'm like a front bitch. I'm a front hole bitch. Okay. <laughs> Take the front. <laughs> she the back bitch, out of front bitch. <laughs> just saying. Uh, a lot of people are asking this, uh, or just on this topic in general, at Ziggy underscore Nardust, why do you cover your feet in pics? Okay, because I found out in 2016 or 2017 that I had a wiki feet page, and I, before this, had not known that there was even a foot fetish that existed that was on a thing. it. Yeah. Which, by the way, the sweetest fetish of all time, this fetish, like how mad are you foot fetish guys? that people know about it now. Cause you just uh, like- Oh, cause it was underground. It's underground and it's a thing nobody knows. So it's just completely exposed. Well, if you look back at Quentin Tarantino's movies now, right. you're like, oh, this guy for sure. I mean, yeah, he's public about heavy, it, but yeah. like, it's like, it's centered around the shots and stuff yeah. like that. Like there was like a shot of Margot Robbie or something like with her feet on the dash yeah. in one of them. And I was like, whoa, this is just creepy me knowing the backstory of him well, being no. like, yeah. He's like, like I'm gonna feet. jizz those feet <laughs> shut. They're gonna be too sticky to move. But I, yeah, no, so once I realized this, I went like, oh no, I can't be giving these boners out for free like this. Not that I'm charging for it, but I mean, it's, uh, I've made my price a million dollars in quarters nice. if you want to see my feet. But I just was thinking like, like I know that like my tits and my vagina, my giant vagina and my asshole gaping, even though no dicks, but it's other things. Um, it's pristinely loose. <laughs> So cute and like you guys would be like that is the that's loosest. the biggest cutest loosest butt like, that is hole I've ever seen. Such a loose asshole. It's just like a real like loose. Situ- Everything's kind of like which hole's which. It's kind of like a hamster wheel back there. There's just stuff yeah, going really on. Cool. You're like there's there's a Rube Goldberg me- mechanism and there going back and forth. There actually is a hamster in there. It's so weird. It's my emotional support animal. But um, my dad. That's my. I just stole a joke from my dad. My dad's joke is because they stopped letting emotional support animals on the plane. I was telling him that because they didn't let me bring my dog. Yeah. Or they, I had to pay for him and put him on the thing. And um, he was like, he's like, well, honey, they don't have to worry. They'll never find my emotional support animal. It's fucking that's actually, that's he's, a funny, My dad's fucking that's a funny so joke. funny. But anyway, so. Use it tonight. Speaking of my dad, my gaping asshole, are they related? It's for you to find out. They might be. Um, I just feel like y- y- I know what is a sexual part and I cover them when I want and I show them when I want. So. I cover my feet when I want. That makes sense. I should start blurring out my nose. People want to fuck that <laughs> Just nose, half dude. Just half my face blurred out in all People my photos. People want to fuck your nose. People have, have messaged me before. They're like, will you measure your nose for me? Like lengthwise? I'm like, all right. What Big is happening? Big noses are good, though. You never thought about a nose job or anything, right? No, but my grandma offered one to me. And That's I was like, so I, And I'm like, I didn't ask. I know. My mom was like, my twin brother's a, on a, he's like a sports producer rest but in a, peace grandma shout out r.i.p bitch um 2021 I mean, young lady but my brother my mom was like if you're gonna be on air you probably need a nose job but he got on air anyway there you go didn't need it i like big noses though thank you i have my behalf, family on behalf of me and the community well when people try to like the people try to come for me for my nose i'm like if you i have a button nose in my family like my family we haven't people we're say you have a big nose yeah see that no. No, but like I'm like why do it's a perfectly it's not a world, normal nose. It's not a world I live in where you could ever get me on my nose. I mean, my my brother's noses are. Well, my older brother got a nose job. There you go. For deviated septum, but I'm like Tim. You left us. You left the family. I feel like the deviated septum thing is like that's like the perfect like loophole. Like I, I mean, medically, I had to take care. It's of more it. of a deviant septum. Mm. These guys are cheating the system. Now a deviant septum. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, two combinations from different people. I see walrus, and this uh, on Instagram and then on Twitter, uh, co ran less. F Mary kill FMK, Stevie. Jeremiah and Eric Griffin. Oh boy. Wow, guys. 
I don't want to sound racist, but KKK. Let's move on. Wow. Put a put a fucking sheet over my head. KKK, baby. Pillowcase my face up. Okay, FMK. Uh, Little Lester, Kalila, or Whitney Cummings. That's Whitney's rich. I'm marrying that bitch. Um, and I'm fucking Kalila. I'm killing Esther. That's the easiest one. Esther's dead. I would kill Esther if there was no fuck Mary kill game. Bring her back to life, but. <sighs> um, th- and I don't know if this is a troll question or not. If this is a real thing that has been discussed on the podcast or not. Smoovin' the cat says, will she let Esther put a finger in her at the same time as Kalila? They are discussing it. Um, is that on an episode of the, the pod that you guys Yeah, discussed? Kalila is saying that she's going to teach Esther how to Kegel by Esther, like, sticking her finger in her. Oh, like like the snapper, like, kind of closing yeah, kind of thing? Yeah, but I like just the feel flower. like I, I, I support Kalila and her, her choice of teaching, like, her genre of teaching. But yeah. I myself think there doesn't need to be any, like, stinky fingers involved to teach a Kegel. It's just like, you know, when you pee, hold those muscles. On Scissor Brothers, we're doing challenges, and that's your challenge. Like, who has the smell in his <laughs> vagina? <laughs> Who's stinking up the joint? I think we know, and she's short. But, um, <laughs> just a guess. But, um, does it count if it's so far to the ground? It's so close to the ground, we can't hear it. Smell it. I mean, hear it. It's queefing. <laughs> no, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know that I'll be fingered by my, my girlfriends, but maybe I will. Uh, were you, would you say that you had any bully mentality in, uh, in school? Fuck you. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Duh. I identify as a bully and I feel like I'm being underrepresented. The, so the first time that we, one of the first times we did a show together was actually when you did my show stand up on the spot. And this was like freaking years ago. What club? It was a, out of the ice house. Okay. And so it's a themed show. Uh huh. And I and and I remember you getting up there and I'm like after that like I'll riff with the comics uh-huh, on stage, uh-huh. and I remember you being like, I hated this show. You're like you're like I just want to do stand up. Like why am I even here? And I was like, because it's a theme. You know, it's just something different. And I was like trying <laughs> well, to. Well, did like, I know before? I I don't I think I so. think I just showed up to do stand up and then I was like wait I have to fucking that's happened before because I was probably bombing and then I was like now not only did I just bomb but now I have to chat on stage after I bombed Eliza for, I probably wanted to escape Eliza forgot one time that it was stand up on the spot and she goes up there she was like ladies she's going into <laughs> yeah. her material and people start yelling stuff out trying to be like politely be like right. get into the theme of the yeah, show yeah yeah and she's like why are people heckling me she goes off and then like uh. And then I reminded her from, I had to call out from the back. I'm like, right. it's, it's stand up on the spot. It's that show, Eliza. And then yeah. she did like, it hit her and it was so funny because the yeah, rest everyone of the, else saw it. Yeah. Everyone else saw like her being like, so this oh. is why I never got booked on your show. And this is why you don't follow me. And this is why you have a little thing about me. I follow you. Do you? I do. Check it right now. Cause I remember following you once and then you didn't follow me back. I'm like, this motherfucker, we got the same face, same hair. You ain't going to fucking follow me back. And a lot of boys have problems with me. And I'm like, oh my God, Todd's already here, ready to go. Oh. I could have told him to go to Whitney's. <laughs> Yikes. But I, this is what it is. That's okay. That's good. But I, cause I was always like, why does he book me in his fucking stand up on the spot show? Because you did it once and you said you hated it. That's so funny. It is always my fault. <laughs> And I was like, everything oh. traces back to this <laughs> I, small bitch. I'll I, tell you that. I literally was like, oh. I was like, this motherfucker just hates me. Doesn't want me on his fucking show. What the no, fuck? I, once I start doing it again, I'll have you back. Because I would love to n- do it. Now that, now, I, that, now I like that stuff. But you know what it is? You know when you're like first starting comedy? It's also, like, you when you did the show, you came in with hot East Coast energy. Like you came in with like... Right. It was something to because like, I had just moved here, right? You just moved here, and so, there was something to prove. I think a little bit of that, like I'm a real stand up. Like yeah. this is how we do it in New York. We don't do these little theme shows. It was that kind That's of energy. projection. No, but I think it was. <laughs> no, I think what it was was because around that time was when I was like doing Montreal or whatever. It's like you're you are you're trying to get one set together, right? Like yes. you're trying to like get like, you have this joke, then it leads into this joke, then this joke. And you're like, maybe I'll switch it to this one. So that's how I was looking at stand up. I was like, every set was like this set that I need to like figure out for a later thing, which I mean, now they're all stand up on the spot. As far as I'm concerned, I'm like, look, look at your hat. And then it's like, oh yeah, I forgot every joke. Well, no, that's written. literally why I never asked you to do it. Like recently that's I was like, oh, she so hates the show, funny. but I wanted to bring it up to you. Cause I was like, I wonder if she still 
You know what I mean? No, I'll, I don't remember saying that. No, oh, well, I, there you go. Well, that's why you clear no, the air on podcasts. people are so, yeah, everyone thinks <laughs> I, they're like, they think I'm really confident. I mean, I am confident now, but that's like literally been two weeks. It's like, I've, <laughs> I've had an epiphany. <laughs> It's been two weeks. But people are like, you're so confident. You're so mean. You're so this. And I'm like, I literally was on the spectrum for Asperger's. I think it could be Asperger's. Right. I just, I'm like, just say the thing. And then I'm like. Like, that's that's the new being a bitch is like, I have Asperger's. But there's another. <laughs> but also, I guess I'm a bitch. But there was another. Um, there's another comic who doesn't like. I'm like, this motherfucker doesn't like me. doesn't follow me back. I comment on his things. I'm like, this is interesting. And then one of my friends was like, why do you not like her? And he goes. Well, one time we were at Swingers, and I don't remember what she said, but she said something, and like everyone laughed. And I was like, it "Sounds like." Wait, he was jealous. I think he. I said something about him, and everyone laughed. Oh, but like but that's, what, I we mean, that's what we do. Also, that's the difference between East Coast and West Coast comics. Sometimes is right. I had to literally learn when I went out to the East Coast when people were ribbing me. Like somebody told me, like, like they're like Jeremiah. That means they're like they yeah. like you if they're like kind of giving you crap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I was like, oh. But that like the East Coast people. Since you have met all of these people, mm-hmm. since I did that show, yeah, they've gotten nicer. They would have all told you they didn't like your show if they didn't like it. Oh, for sure. But they wouldn't. But, but now also, everyone's nice because they go, wait a second, there's a lot of money over in LA. They're going, oh wait, just being these road dogs that make us that much money. So now everyone's like, we'll be a little bit nicer than we right, were before. Right. But we used to just like, we were so brutal. We'd be just like crying. Like it was just bloody. Well, like eight or nine years ago also, you have to think of it this way. You are more East Coast and I'm more Kansas right, back then. Right, right, right. So I'm extra more simp like right, right. Uh, I just want you to have a good time and stuff and you're That's like so eh, this show sucks and I'm like and then I'm taking and it I probably heart. don't even know that you like created the show or anything I'm just like no you the just thought I'm something. like hosting it yeah. I'm like ugh and usually if I say I hate the show it's usually like I hated myself on the show it's not like <laughs> right right because right. if I had a good set I wouldn't have been but no but I used to always be like oh my god when you have to fucking when you bomb on a show and then you have to stay up there and talk to someone. Oh yeah. That's oh, like the, my the, nightmare, but now I don't chat. care. Yeah. yeah. Now it's just like, whatever. But I remember like, remember when the comedy store did that thing at, uh, the La Fonda or the Fonda? Yeah. Was it La Fonda? Yeah. And they had like the downstairs, it was like a festival that wasn't at the comedy store for some reason. Yeah. It was so They're weird. They're trying to like branch out yeah, a little bit. Why? Yeah. But then downstairs was like the famous people and then they threw the scrubs up top and we were just outside, which now we're all good at doing outside comedy, but it was like, you're getting like heckled by like an airplane. It was just so hard to oh, do yeah. well. And like Brody kills, obviously. Brody just smashes. So then I'm getting cocky. I'm like smoking a cigarette because I could on stage, but now I use fume. And you're welcome, cha-ching. And, um, <laughs> Thank you. And then Dr. Drew is like, hey, do you want to come? I'm like, I bombed so bad. And he goes, hey, we're doing like post interviews. And he's like, so were you molest? You know, I'm like, I don't want to tell you. I remember going like, he was like right what fucked you, you up to like do comedy? And I was like, <laughs> right after you bombed. So when was the last time you were molested? It's like, how many? It's like, how- obviously I was molested. I'm here. I'm doing this. And then I was like, you know, I'm like, ugh. And then I just done Mark Maron's podcast where I talked about it. So I was like, just, I was like, just, you can listen to my Mark Maron. I remember him going, did you just plug another podcast on my podcast? And I went, yeah, I gotta go. So he probably fucking hates me too. Right. Um, but I know, it's about me. I just was like, I gotta get out of here. I know you gotta go. Uh, let's. I want to wrap up with this. Uh, uh, this very short segment is called Sax Talk. Oh, sax talk. I met a guy who had a small dick, and I w- and he was very nice, and it was like we were very like um, not going to be a boyfriend girlfriend thing, but we were like, it was a very like it was a very um, understanding re- sexual relationship. Irish guy and uh, so he was in town we'd met in Ireland he was in town and he was like is there anything you want to like try and I was like you know I don't really like the idea of anal but I'll try because your his penis was so small so I was like this is like the one that I could put in my asshole so he books a hotel I'm going to Boston to visit my my sister-in-law my brother my twin brother and my nieces okay so he books a hotel near the bus stop that I'm going to have to take up to see them. So then I, we, we have like not exciting. I mean, I was so worried that I was going to shit on his dick that I didn't eat. I had soup for breakfast. I called all my gay friends. I called like, I had a porn star friend who actually unfollowed me after this, but I was like, what should I do? I don't want to shit on him. And she was so disgusted that I hadn't had anal sex yet that she like was done with me. I was such a prude. So then 
So I go to this hotel room. We have like, uh, it's not good sex. I'm mad. I'm in a bad mood. I'm hungry. I'm cranky. We end up going to a diner. We get back to the place. I'm just like, whatever. It's like, it it was a a fine night, but it was, you know, more just a story. And I stayed anti-anal. And then um, the next day I get on the bus to go up to Boston to see my nieces, my sister-in-law, my twin brother. The plan is I ride the bus. I take an Uber to my sister-in-law's work where she is a boss. She manages a whole team of people. And... Uh, she's going to drive me back to the house after work. So on the bus, I use my quiet voice, which I now know doesn't exist. And I whisper to my friend and I tell her the whole story about fucking him. I didn't shit on him. I had soup for breakfast. My gay friends, my porn star friend blocked me. She doesn't like me anymore because I have not had anal before. And I think I'm whispering this and not telling anyone. So I then get the Uber to my my sister-in-law's office and... She goes, my, the girl who works under me, her sister was on the same bus as you. And she just asked if I, if you were on the bus and she heard the whole story. Like, what are the chances that I ruin my sister-in-law's, her level of power over this woman? It's an HR situation. And, uh, you know, and then I was constipated because of the, fud- the, the packing of the fudge. And so she made me chili. It was very sweet. She made me chili. And then my nieces would come over and be like, Mommy, tell me to give you this. And they hand me a prune. It's a beautiful story. They really gave you ch- chili after? Yeah, she made me chili because I was constipated. Isn't that sweet? Chili after anal sex. Yeah. Post anal chili. Post anal chili. I know, guys. That's when you're fucking post Malone <laughs> in the ass. And he shits a little bit, but it looks like chili. Well, we learned a lot today. Yeah, we did. Put your retainer back on, you nerd. I know, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> you're the first we- person to comment on it. These people don't give a shit about you. I know. They don't care. See, people always think I'm mean, but I'm actually paying attention to everything. Present. Yeah. Actually, Steve told me, he, he goes, Annie, Annie, she really noticed stuff around my place. Yeah, I give a fuck about people. People you, always get mad at me. I'm like, yeah, or like if people are like, read the room, it's usually someone's ego because I'm like, I was reading the room and your ego was making it weird. So that's why I was making jokes. Not you, when I was talking to you about your thing. Have you developed an impression of Kalila or Esther being around them that much? No. Impressions are a lot like singing for me. You know what I mean? Just like, mm-hmm. I just want to be this small bitch. Be a mall bitch. But Esther would be like, mm, I'm scared. <laughs> I'm cold. <laughs> Can we end it? <laughs> I got to go. I have a heart out to nowhere. Like, where's your heart out at 6 p.m.? Yeah. Um, Annie, thank you so much for coming on the show, pal. And, so fun. Um, uh, you're back on tour, right? I'm back on tour. I have... Um, I'm doing, when does this come out? Monday. Okay, Monday. So the 27th of this month, I will be at, at, doing a one-nighter at the Brea Improv, California here. Oh, come. heck yeah. And then I'm doing, um, I have like a one-nighter at Flappers on June 4, 15th, which... Yeah, why not? Why not? <laughs> and then I have... Um, I have like actual weekends coming. Oh my God. I have to May look at my May 20th through 22nd. I'm at the Sacramento Punchline. Oh, he just um, takes it over. And I'm in uh, Portland Helium, uh, May 28th through the 30th. Uh, so check that out. And then Annie has a couple more dates. I, was just, I got to find my fucking. No, it's fine. You interrupted me. It doesn't matter. We're family. Was, we're family. We're family. We're family. I was family. grabbing my dates while you're looking up no, those. No, we're family. <laughs> so there's it's no fine. that dead air, homie. You know I'm what I'm saying? I'm doing like a secret thing that I can't talk about that oh, might be okay. in an area where a lot of our friends have moved to oh, this next weekend right. coming up. Interesting. Um, I am doing Wise Guys in Salt Lake City, July 16th through 17th. That's an awesome club. Can't wait to do it. Yeah. Um, I'm doing, um, uh, I'm doing Dallas, uh, September 30th to October 3rd. I'm doing the, um, House of Comedy in Dallas. Um... And there's more. I, I there's, a, there. there's a bunch more, yeah. 
I've got a special out on Amazon Prime right now if you want to check that out. It's free if you're a Prime member to watch it. It's called Jeremiah Watkins Family Reunion. If you're not Reunion. a Prime member, get your life together. Get what it the fuck? together. What are I'm you even doing? Also at the Hartford Funny Bone, August 27th through 29th. Um, and I love that club. That was actually so fun. It's also in a mall. There's new uh, Bloodbath merch that's up. There's Scissor Bros merch that's up online on our sites. Check that out. Um, we got I, we a lot don't of have stuff. merch yet. We're rebranding, changing the name. I believe it's going to be Blood Honeys. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Why? We're making it sexier. Do you think bath is, is too visceral? Bloodbath? Okay, so like Esther, first of all, doesn't like blood, but we had to like convince her of it but bloodbath it was so funny because she was like i don't know i just don't like blood and then the first thing someone drew us like fan art was like kalila in a tub of blood and then me and esther floating over her with our throat slit and blood just like gushing out and so we're just like <laughs> we're, we're considering you know blood the long honeys term. is more like uh i don't know it sounds like a 70s thing or something blood honeys does sound it's cool though right I like it. And then I like it because... We had to, we had to rebrand... For, well, it well was, because, yeah, you were being sued. No, that was fake. That was fake. <laughs> was it? It was fake because you changed. Quit stirring it up, girl. <laughs> that mall bitch is out. And <laughs> she's acting fierce. Listen. Listen. And you were getting sued, bitch, by a fucking ginge. <laughs> I love you. Thank you for being here. All right. Thank you, too, man.